Safe to say I wasn't expecting that. Yeehaw! There are companies that make a business, you know, replacing windscreens. And most of the windscreens nowadays don't use a rubber gasket. They use a kind of a, a sealant. It's kind of rubbery and hard to get off. And they use a reciprocating saw to get that out. It's got a, a putty knife, a wide putty knife. And they go around the edge of the windscreen, cuts that out, and the windscreen comes off. I don't have one of those. But what I do have, though, is an oscillating saw or a, or a multi-saw. And that's just a standard blade. I'm experimenting. This is a blade that was all dull and I've ground the teeth off. And um, I'm going to see if this will work to cut this insulation off of here. Wow, I'm going to have to use air protection for that. It won't work perfectly, but it works better than me on a putty knife. I think I'll need a combination of tools here. The motorhome is so light now, it rocks like a, I can, by stepping to the rear end, I can make the motorhome rock on the mount here, since the wheels aren't on it anymore. And with the putty knife, this would be really hard. So, it's gonna be a combination. I'm going to enlist help, and uh, you may or may not want to do this for very long, but let's see how long you go. Okay, feel that. There's a button right there, push up. To start anywhere and start, you have to go a little bit. It only goes so far because it's really rigid. It stops up here. We just go in and then go to the side. I'll, I'll try to peel it out as you go. Well, now with the uh, dash and everything removed, uh, air conditioning coils out, uh, everything's gone. It's just got some paper, you know, it's not really anything. A couple of small brackets. The nose is off the front now. Uh, it's just, just, this is just the alloy frame and skin. So I'm, uh, I've lost my helper for the day. So I'm going to go back there now and start scraping off more of the uh, spray foam insulation. And uh, see if I can get that pretty much taken care of. Not a lot of rigidity in this shell anymore. The floor is pretty much stable, but the box, yeah, not a lot left. I think when I take the roof off, the walls will just fall off. Hmm. Before I take the roof off, um, I still have this bit of fiberglass. I keep forgetting about this piece. Um, after I get the, this part off, I'll probably use the gantry like I did the front part. I'll drill out all the rivets, and then I'll use the gantry to start lifting the roof off. And I don't know what will happen to the walls, but I reckon they're going to be very floppy. I think I'll get my chair out of there when I do it, so it, I think I'll just try to push them in or something. They're not going to weigh a lot. There's not a lot to them. I mean, it's, it's very much a space frame. And... Uh, Yep, go from there. All right, you can see the roof is, the roof is loose through there. And the skin on the outside of this stuff here, that's just kind of glued onto these ribs. There's no rivets or anything holding those on. At the same time, these ribs don't appear to be welded or stapled or screwed onto this extrusion, which is all one big piece. Or is it? No, it isn't. This is a separate piece to that. So I should be able to pry that off. 
Yeah. Let's go with that. Oh, there we go. It's coming off. Make sure I'm not inside. I'm going to start at the other end and work this way. So I can get out of the way quicker if this walls fall inward. Probably not that heavy, but I don't want to take any chances. Oh, there's nothing holding this in anymore. I believe. Yeah, there's nothing holding this. That is as free as a bird. based on my really cursory research, um, sheet aluminum is worth roughly 25 cents a pound. And uh, then the extrusions are worth about 65 cents a pound. And there's qualifications. Some of it has paint, it's dirty, you know. Uh, it makes it worse if there is any metal, ferrous iron in it. That It's hard to get that out at the scrap place, so you gotta get that stuff out. And they'll give you more money for it. So the biggest pieces of sheet alloy that I have is the roof and the two sides. And the dash is a uh, pressed sheet, um, or should I say the firewall. But everything else on this motorhome is gonna be an extrusion. The sheets are big, because they're just in big pieces. The extrusions, I can probably take a small trailer, and, but they'll weigh just as much, because they're heavier, heavier wall. And uh, they'll, but they'll just take up less space. Anyways, so that's my, that's what I'll try to do is just cut these in sections and flip it over, bust the extrusions loose, clean them up, put them in one pile. The sheet, I'll get those in those sections and when I get those done, I'll probably just drag them over to the trailer and stack those up. And uh, yeah, get this room clear so that I can drag in the next part of my, uh, my project. So how am I gonna cut this up? Well, that works pretty well on aluminum. You wouldn't want to, you can do it with steel too, but that uh, takes a different machine. These are just standard carbide tip blades. Uh, I'm gonna wear gloves and all that because uh, the parts of metal that are gonna come off of this go spraying everywhere. And uh, I just don't want to hurt myself. But keep the pain down to a minimum. Uh, you might ask why I'm gonna cut this this way six feet. It's because uh, my trailer is six feet three inches between sides, and this is six feet seven inches. It just won't fit on the trailer as it is. Plus, I only have a 16-foot trailer, and this is, I don't know what this is. This is probably approaching 18 feet. Yeah, 17 feet, two and a half inches. It's just easier to handle. These are pressings. So this is an extrusion. That's an extrusion. This, the other side is an extrusion. But this is pressed, 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 pressed. That's like Z iron when you're building a shed or something. that's it. I'll go ahead and stack this last roof piece with the others outside. And the walls have already been stripped of insulation. So all I have to do is peel the skins off of those. And I'll take those outside too and then I just have the skeleton.
These are the three frames. There's three pieces there. That's the uh, part that came off underneath the back end. That's the uh, three roof skins. Over here I've got all the... Here's some of the extrusions. And that's some of the uh, other ribs that were pressed. These bins are kind of full of stuff too. And that's all that's left of the motorhome. This top band here and the bottom are welded to the big extruded ribs here. I, uh, and that was after the skin was kind of stabbed into there and into there. So I'm just going to try to see if I can just get it to come out, maybe by prying down on it. Let's start by just seeing how hard it is to get that skin off. That's not very hard at all. Have to break all the glue free first, I think. There's still a risk this wall can fall in on me. You have to be aware of it, I guess. I just think it's easier to get the skin off while it's standing up. Now the skin's kind of held in by a bead on the door jam here. I don't know how far I'm going to get with this part right here. Yeah, that ain't going to come out. I don't think. Um, I could take the saw and just slice down the middle. One down, three more to go. Two little ones in the front, and this other big one. Moving right along. There's not a lot else holding this framework on here, this, this skeleton. Uh, based on what's happened back there is the welds holding these spines, or these ribs, onto the floor is some welds which are pretty brittle. I think really what's holding this beef up now are the, uh, it's the front end here. So um, I can't really take this fiberglass off yet. I've tried to take it off and all it is is break up the fiberglass. So I have to really get underneath it somehow. And uh, even if I could, I can't get to it down there because I've got a, a two before. It's right there where it joins onto the, the uh, extrusion that goes along the belly. So I'm going to cut the nose off and see if I can just break this off. Then I'll work on this later. Uh, I'm hoping it won't come off that piece of wood, although it might. And if it does, no big deal. It doesn't weigh anything. I can pick it up with the crane. So um, this glue they used is amazing stuff. It, it bonded really well after 47 years still bonding. It's still kind of flexible. Okay, so um, there's welds all along here and uh, let's uh, cut them off.
That worked. Safe to say I wasn't expecting that. Yeehaw. Well, it looks like the only thing holding on the footboards is uh, pop rivets. One, two, somewhere in there, three, four, five, six, might be along there, seven, yeah, so let's see how that goes. most basic of tools. It was just too hard to take that nose piece apart. It's just it's welded together in so many places and I can't get to them. Now I'll just leave it in one piece and I'll get the rest of this out of here first then I'll use the tractor to pick it up and put it in the trailer. So now I'm just going to break that wall off let her fall inside. strap and pull it down. See how that works. Open it tight. I think those two are broken off. It's just the front three aren't. Let's see how it goes, me pulling this fiberglass for it's right here. Yeah, now, just clean up some of this foam. I'll cut it in the header over there above the door, and I'll have two pieces. I'm going to drag that out. Well, it appears that the floor is held on by a lot of Torx screws. Here's one of them.
All right, that's one motorhome body gone. I hope you've enjoyed phase one, combining a GMC motorhome with an American LaFrance fire truck. This was just phase one. Tore apart the, uh, the motorhome, got the frame sitting over there, the body sitting here and over there and over there, everywhere. Phase two, building that fire truck. That's gonna be the undercarriage and the drivetrain and the motor. If you've enjoyed this phase one, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.